Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Sashin. Yes. A 46-year-old female presented to the ER with complaints of abdominal pain and vomiting of one day duration. On our initial 10-second assessment, the patient was conscious, oriented and obeying commands. Coming to primary survey, airway was patent, no secretions. Coming to breathing, air entry bilateral equal, respiratory rate of 22 per minute, saturation of 99% in room air. Coming to circulation, BP of 120-70 mm of mercury, pulse rate of 96 beats per minute. Two large bore IV cannulas were inserted during this point of time. Coming to disability, GCS of E4, B5, M6, pupil bilaterally equally reacting to light. Coming to exposure, temperature of 98.9 degree Fahrenheit, GRBS of 380 mg per deciliter. <coughs> Coming to urgence of primary survey, VBG was taken, showing a pH of 6.96, PCO2 of 16, bicarb of 5, uh, corrected sodium was 135, lactate of 1.2, potassium of 3.8, uh, bicarb of, 3, uh, of 5, which point towards a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Okay. Uh, the calcium in the VBG show 0 0.87. Okay. We also took an ECG which showed sinus tachycardia with a QTC of 540. <coughs> Coming to sample history, a 46 year old female Known case of type 2 diabetes, spondylar arthropathy, status post total thyroidectomy on 2020, presented to the ER with complaints of abdominal pain of one day duration. It was epigastric with no radiation, <coughs> no other associated symptoms, no aggravating or relieving factors. <coughs> the patient also gives history of two episodes of vomiting, which was non projectile and contains food particles. There were no history of any food intake from outside, no chest pain, no palpitation, fever, giddiness, no strider. No irritability, no altered behavior, no history of any seizures. No history of any similar episodes in the past. The patient gives history of uh, skipped insulin dose since one week. No history of any allergies. Coming to medication history, the patient is on hydroxychloroquine and tofacitinib for rheumatoid arthritis. The patient is on dapaglifosin, metformin, glimepiride for type 2 diabetes. The patient was on Mixtar 2008. Which rheumatoid was arthritis and spondylar arthropathy both are the same. Different or same? It's entirely different. Uh, this one, spondylar arthritis is uh, mainly affecting the axial spine. Metoid arthritis is a peripheral joint disorder. Very rarely, spine can be involved. That that too only cervical spine, not the lower lumbar spine or the sacroiliac joint. It all occurs in spondylar arthropathy. Okay. The patient is on Tyronom 125 microgram. Uh, the last meal was taken yesterday 9 pm. The patient was also on amitriptyline uh, for neuropathy. Uh, coming to uh, general examination, no pallor, no ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. <coughs> uh, coming to systemic, we also done the Chewstock sign, the Trocio sign, which was negative. Coming to systemic examination, CVS S1, S2 percent, uh, no murmurs, respiratory system, <coughs> entry bilaterally equal. <clears throat> no added, added sounds. CNS, uh, GCS was 15 by 15, moving all four limbs. No focal neurological deficit. GIT abdomen was soft, non tender, and bowel <coughs> sounds were present. What all neurological abnormalities can be there in hypocalcium? This patient's calcium is low, according to your VBG report. Uh, sir, uh, altered behavior, uh, seizures, mm. uh, irritability, mm. uh, sarcomoral numbness, mm. neuromuscular. Irritability can be. Okay. All nervous, nervous system irritability is very common in hypocalcemia. So what, what signs you get in hypocalcemia? Uh, Trocytic sign. Trocytic sign. sign. Okay. So, you cannot tell there are no neurological findings. Actually, okay. neurological findings will be there. But we have not focused on that. Okay. So, our uh, provisional diagnosis was hyperglycemic state. Uh, DK, which was precipitated by uh, skipped insulin dose, and also there is hypocalcemia under evaluation, sir. Okay, what is the magnesium level in this patient? Magnesium level was 2.0, sir. 2. Okay. Is magnesium is important for uh, hypocalcemia and diabetes? Yes, sir. Magnesium <coughs> helps in the intake of insulin into the cells. Okay. So, that is uh, insulin uh, metabolism. Magnesium is very important. Calcium? And calcium, uh, magnesium will cause us, uh, it is the most common reversible cause. 
of um, PTH resistance. Yeah. Okay. Hypomagnesium yeah. is there, there will be PTH resistance. Okay. Okay. PTH resistance is common when there is um, oh. hypomagnesium. Okay. So, both the condition, magnesium is a very important element. Not only this condition, there are a lot of uh, metabolic activities in your body is controlled by magnesium, okay, regulated by magnesium. So, in this patient, we have sent all the routine investigations, CBC, CRP, uh, creatine, all electrolytes mm. and uh, albumin, mm. uh, thyroid function. Mm, sir, in uh, AK patients, we have to evaluate the course of hypocalcemia. Okay. In AK and CKD patients, both can have hypocalcemia. hypocalcemia. And serum ketones, including serum ketones, sir. And the uh, lab investigation, serum ketones were 3 plus, sir. Hmm. Uh, total count of 12,000, CRP of 7, creatine what was 0. What is the PBG value? PH? Uh, PH was 6.96, sir. 6.96. Is there any difference between ABG and VBG? Yes, sir. PH uh, 0.03. You may be knowing. She will not be knowing. Is there any difference between ABG and VBG? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. PH wise, yes. how much difference will be there? So, he has taken VBG in this patient. She is having suspected DK. <coughs> is he right or wrong? You are afraid of him. <laughs> you have to tell, is he right or wrong? You have to tell something. Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. We are right because uh, the difference is very negligible. pH wise, it is very negligible. Only in your CO2 and O2, it will be different. Okay. So, to monitor uh, decay and all, like metabolic acidosis, this is more than sufficient. Every time you know, need to prick the patient. Okay. So, in this patient, serum ketones were 3 plus. We initially started with IV fluids. Hmm. Uh, we have checked the IVC. IVC was kissing IVC and collapsed with the index was more than 50 percent. Okay. That means what? Uh, Volume depleted, sir. So, he, she can receive more volume. Okay. Clinically, how do you judge this volume de depletion? So, uh, ultrasound, if it is there, then okay. it is very easy. If you don't have an ultrasound, what do you do? Uh, we can look for passive leg raising test. Uh, okay. We can for tachycardia after patient and okay. dehydration, other signs of capillary refilling time. Okay. So, we have started the patient on IV fluid, sir. Uh, we have corrected the, the corrected calcium was calculated, sir. It what was IV 130. Fluid is started? Uh, we have started in a normal saline, sir. Correct. The calcium was 134, sir. Okay. So, you just imagine somebody is having severe hypocalcemia. You are forced to start a lot of fluids in this patient. What will happen to calcium? Diuresis. Diuresis in next phase. You have limited calcium in body. You are giving more fluid. What will happen to the body calcium immediately after that? Dilution. Again, so, it will uh, get diluted. So, you have to be very careful in this patient. Calcium should be replaced first itself. Okay. So, you can along with your fluid, calcium also should be started. Otherwise, patient can develop further hypocalcemia and arrhythmias. Okay. So, here we have to manage the DK and also hypocalcemia. Okay. Both should be managed yeah, together. together. Don't think that after uh, DK management, I will start treatment for hypocalcemia. Since ECG also show prolonged QTC of 540, mm -hmm. uh, we manage hypocalcemia simultaneously with DK, sir. So, how do you manage hypocalcemia? Uh, hypocalcemia, sir, initially we have given injection calcium gluconate, 10 mm -hmm. percentage, 10 ml over 10 minutes. Followed by, we have started infusion of calcium also, sir. Okay. 5 gram, we have taken 5 ampules. Is there any better drug for this? Chloride. Chloride. Which is higher concentration. Elemental calcium is high, sir. 3 yeah, times more three than. Times it is very high. <coughs> but it is not available in our hospital, sir. So. And it requires underline also. Okay. So, immediately we have given injection okay. calcium gluconide. This condition is ideal for calcium chloride okay. injection. But we have only calcium gluconide. Okay. So, we have taken 5 ampule calcium gluconide. Each ampule contains 93 elemental calcium. Okay. And we have diluted in 500 ml of 5 percentage dextrose mm -hmm. and we have supplemented over 5 to 6 hours. Okay. We connected the cardiac, cardiac monitor also. Okay. And simultaneously we have managed DK. So, d d this patient is having DK. Can you give dextrose water in this patient? Um, yes or no? No. It is no, yes. Okay. Uh, you, already patient is having high blood sugar. Even if you give little more blood sugar, nothing will happen to the patient. Only thing you, are, you need to give fluids. So, you are giving dextrose saline. How much fluid will remain in the intravascular compartment when you are giving dextrose containing solution? So, the, here the problem is intravascular dehydration. Some extravascular dehydration also will be there. You are forced to give DNS along with your uh, uh, this uh, calcium gluconate. 
So, can uh, you uh, tell me how much fluid in that 500 ml re will remain in the intravascular compartment? Uh, 200. Uh, 100 to 200, 200 maximum. Okay, if you are giving DN, uh, sorry, normal saline or ringerlactin, it will be around 300. Okay, but when you are giving fluid immediately, the volume will expand. It takes some time to go to extravascular compartment. Okay. And we have started uh, IV fluids, sir. Uh -huh. um, Insulin and also potassium. Sir. How do you replace IV fluid? Uh, IV fluid, sir. Uh, we, the corrected sodium was 135. We have uh, started NS initially. NS bar RL initially we have started. Mm -hmm. RL contains slightly higher amount of calcium compared to NS. So alternately, okay. uh, NS bar RL we have started. Okay. Initially, uh, we have bolus 2 liters. We have checked the IVC. Then uh, we have again supplemented 2 liters over the next 4 hours. Then 2-3 uh, liters over the next 6 hours based on IVC and the output, sir. Okay. So, when you are giving 1 litre of normal serine, how much will remain in the intravascular compartment? Mm. Normal serine, 1 litre you are giving, how much will remain in the intravascular compartment? Half? Huh? 300 ml will remain in the intravascular compartment, rest will shift to extravascular compartment. Will it go to the intracellular compartment? Mm. Huh? Yes or no? In this condition, as the cells are already shrinked, it will immediately shift to It will go to extravascular compartment. I am asking, will it from there, will it go to the intracellular compartment or not? Yes. It will not go like that. It will go to intracellular compartment. That is why at one point you have to give DNS also or, or dextrose contained solution. That will replenish the intracellular volume. Okay. So, this patient will have extra intracellular volume depletion extravascular volume depletion, intravascular volume depletion. So, each stage you have to replenish all the uh, all the areas. So, initially we are giving only normal saline or ringer lactate. Uh, around 300 ml will remain in the intravascular compartment after some time. Okay. So, rest will go to the extravascular compartment, not to the extracellular, sorry, intracellular compartment. To replenish that, you will have to give some dextrose solution afterwards. Okay. That will be giving once uh, sugar is low. Okay. Uh, then we have started insulin infusion in this patient, sir. Okay. When, when, when did you start the insulin infusion? And uh, how will you monitor the blood sugar? When you are giving dex, uh, normal saline, what, uh, when you are monitoring the blood sugar, what changes you can observe? So, you are giving normal saline, yes. 100 ml per hour. Okay. So, you are, you will be checking the blood sugar also. Mm, yes. Will it drop? You are yes. giving only normal saline. Will it drop? Yes. yes. Definitely it will drop. Okay. Around 100 mg will drop Drogue. by 1 or 2 hours. Okay. Then? So, you are, you have started your normal saline. Then what you do? Check, uh, check the potassium. Okay. okay. What is the potassium here? Uh, the patient potassium was 3.8, sir. So, it should we replace potassium? Yes, sir. Along with fluids, we have okay. supplemented so, potassium. Okay. potassium was supplemented. Then? Then uh, insulin, insulin infusion. infusion also. How much insulin infusion you have started for this patient? Uh, usually, we can go either for bolus dose or insulin infusions. Usually, mm -hmm. we prefer insulin infusion since the patient is severely dehydrated. Okay. Okay. Uh, roughly, uh, how much of sugar is there? Divide by 100 approximately. So, initial dose is different. Initial so, dose is 0 0.1 mm -hmm. units per kg so, body. So, a 70 mm -hmm. kg means you can give 7, 7 units as a bolus or a per hour infusion. Okay. You can give up to 10 also. Okay. So, that will be started. After one hour, you can either check by uh, total num total amount of sugar by 100. That will give the infusion protocol or you can go for Yale protocol. Yale protocol of insulin infusion, you, have to, you can follow. That you put in mobile phone, you can get the value. Okay. Android phones will give. Okay. Either you go for that or in simplest ways, uh, the amount of uh, that 300 or 400 by 100 okay. that will give the infusion rate. Okay. And then here monitor the ins insulin infusion. So after one hour, suppose it is same. What you do? Uh, we can uh, now it is 700. You have started seven units infusion per hour. After one hour, it is 700. The expected drop is not there. What is expected drop? 75 to 75 to 100. If that is not there, what do you do? Just double the. So either double the dose. Okay. Then again, after one hour, it is still the same. What do you do? Again, again double, double the, the dose. dose. Okay, that's all. Okay, we cannot do more than that. Okay. If it is dropping down, then you can reduce the 
dose of insulin. Okay. Then what you do? Continue the infusion. Then what will happen? We will continue the infusion uh, till the sugars. Uh, hourly uh, sugar should be 75 to 100. Drop uh, should drop be. Should be okay. Till uh, the sugars, uh, serum ketones becomes negative. Okay. Anonic gap is corrected. Okay. Acidosis become corrected and patients start to take oral feeds. Okay. Okay. If the, our target is between 150-200. If the sugar falls below 150, okay. we will supplement with TNS. Okay. So do you think that this acidosis is only because of ketoacidosis in diabetes patients? So closure of the anion gap is very important. So that is most important. But uh, sometimes you cannot see the acidosis, uh, like uh, closure of acidosis will not happen. That will remain acidosis only. So, the, what are the other conditions which can produce acidosis? And lactic acidosis can lactic be there. Lactic acidosis alcohol, can be there. Uh, renal failure, liver alcohol, failure. Alcohol, associated alcohol, renal failure, mm -hmm. liver failure, hyperchloremic acidosis. How many problems can still have, patients still can have uh, acidosis? Okay. So, Disappearance of ketone bodies from the blood will be the end point of your infusion. Okay. Can you see the urine ketones? Yes, urine ketones will persist even for Okay, so years. urine ketones are not a good uh, factor for stopping the insulin. It will persist after some time also. Okay, then? Uh, then apparently we have uh, went with the workup of hypocalcemia. Sir. Mm, what is the common cause for hypocalcemia in your clinical practice? Uh, hyperalbuminemia. Common cause? Common cause for hypocalcemia in your clinical practice. I am not talking about books. Respiratory, panic attacks, respiratory. That is actually, it is not a uh, hypocalcemia. It is only shift of calcium. What is the common cause for real hypocalcemia in your clinical practice? That is post-thyroidectomy. Yes, that is post-thyroidectomy. Most of the patients will have hypocalcemia. So, that most of the time we miss it because th this patient also... They have done the thyroidectomy, but nobody has replaced the calcium in this patient. So, that is the most common and most missed the misdiagnosis. Okay. We have to be very careful in this type of patients. Vitamin D deficiency cannot produce severe hypercalcemia like this. Severe hypercalcemia? Not very common. You can get mild uh, vitamin, uh, sorry, mild calcium, calcium deficiency. Okay. That is that in later stage of, uh, stages of uh, hypovitaminosis. Then... PTH deficiency, definitely you can have. Same like this. Okay. So, we have sent the parathyroid hormones. Mm. Uh, first, we have checked the albumin level, magnesium, everything. It was normal. Creatinine, everything was normal. Mm. Then, parathyroid hormone came to 13. It was on the lower side. No. Okay. Uh, the vitamin D also came to be 10, which was mm. also in the lower side. So okay. Uh, so, we have supplemented with uh, oral and uh, IV correction of calcium. Okay. Supplemented. Calcium and anything else to be given? Vitamin D3 also. Okay. Yes. Vitamin D3 also should be given. Okay. What happened to the patient afterwards? Uh, at present, uh, we have repeated the BBGs, everything. It is improving. The mm. pH acidosis, uh, it's improving. Mm. And uh, the patients uh, started to take uh, oral fluids. Mm. And uh, serum ketones become trace. And calcium also around the range of 8.26. Initially, it was uh, 6. Now, it is 8.26. Okay. So, calcium. you have to tell me. What was the total insulin required requirement in this patient on the last day of infusion? Uh, total insulin in infusion required during the last 24 hours before switching to subcutaneous dose. Last 24 hours was 25 units. Sir. Only 25, 25 units. units. Okay. So how do you uh, uh, how do you uh, change to subcutaneous insulin? Uh, 25 units. Uh, hmm. One by third of we will give us a bolus dose and we continue the infusion for one more hour and we will stop. Stop it. And rest the two by third. If we you don't do like that, what will happen? What can happen? Patient decay. Okay. So it can a patient can develop rebound decay. Decay. So that is very common in patients who is taking dapaglifosin and all. So we have to be very careful. This patient was on dapaglifosin. Okay. And then uh, two by third of we will calculate divide into uh, three and again we will use three uh, fixed okay. doses. So what fixed dose you are advised for this patient? Uh, short acting or double <coughs> insulin. So in rapid we have. Yes. How much unit do you give? Uh, Sixteen by three, uh, five to six units TID. So you may require only six or seven units TID. Yes. That is enough. But uh, this patient cannot take uh, three times insulin. So you have to discharge the patient. On what regime you will discharge? You can discharge on mixed start. Mixed start how much? 
uh, again if the total loss is 23rd is the uh, trapped dose and again 2 by 3rd we will take and okay. in that 2 by 3rd we will give morning 1 by 3rd in night okay what are the different types of mix acting insulin available mix acting insulin 30 by 70 50 by 50 50 by 50 25 by 75 okay what is the difference between this 50 by 50 and uh, 25 75 and 30 short acting to the long acting insulin okay. so 50 50 it is 50 percentage regular insulin 50 percentage what is the advantage insulin. where will uh, you use it for uh, those who are taking too much feeds oral feeds okay. if the feet. patients are taking too much uh, food then for them 50 50 will be ideal choice okay where will you use uh, this analog insulin if the patient is developing resistance to human insulin okay. so if the patient developing to developing resistance to human insulin only you need to go for analog insulin suppose the patient is already on analog insulin can you continue it as an infusion yes sir can continue so it is also possible if the patient is already on analog insulin there is no point in changing to a normal insulin we don't know what, why the doctor has changed to analog insulin okay so that also can be given okay do you think that the protocols uh, followed in uh, any hospital like what you are pushing the insulin to a plastic tube is it correct plastic bottle we push the insulin to a plastic bottle is it correct method of giving insulin infusion we don't have uh, such like uh, most of the hospital may not have facilities for that that's why they are using it do you think that it is going to reduce the insulin dose the problem with that plastic bottles insulin can stick on to that plastic bottles so we need to have special syringes for that unfortunately it may not be available in many centers okay so insulin pumps we can use the where the we use syringes which are specially made for that but we all hospital may not have so they push the insulin to uh, bottles okay that may not work like uh, insulin pump so you may require little higher dose in that type of patients okay so anything else you want to add Uh, sir, coming to uh, diabetes as such, uh, initially, sir, uh, we considered uh, DK, and uh, right now we uh, considered definition of diabetes mellitus as a group of disorders that mm-hmm. share a common phenotype that is hyperglycemia. Sir, mm-hmm. initially, we have the three pillars like the liver, muscle, and pancreas are involved in the uh, management of hyperglycemia. Then we come to the ominous octatope difference over five more factors. Then we come to dirty dozen, treacherous fourteen, and at present we have sweetening sixteen. There are sixteen okay. factors, including vitamin D, melatonin, even the gut microbiota play a role in the hyperglycemia. Okay. Then we come to uh, the classification of diabetes. Later, like, uh, initially we had type one diabetes, type two, type one point five, KPD, LADA three and four. Mm. At present we have the classification like SAD, that is severe autoimmune diabetes, mm. SID, that is severe insulin deficient diabetes, and SIRT, severe insulin resistant diabetes, and MORE, that is mild obese related diabetes, and MAR, that is mild age related diabetes. Sir. Okay. And at present we have insulin <coughs> pumps and artificial pancreas, sir, mm-hmm. updated version of the insulin infusion pumps. Mm-hmm. So insulin pump, what is the advantage? Uh, we can uh, monitor directly and insulin is so delivered. Patient will get a feedback of how much blood sugar is. Okay. He himself can control the pump. Okay, so that is the advantage. Well, if already patient is having insulin pump, should we? Uh, if the patient develops DK, should we try something else? Like uh, your IV infusion is required. Patient is already having insulin pump. Patient develops DK. Pump failure. Pump failure. Pump failure is not happening. Pump is pushing. So, do you want to give IV infusion then? It is one basic dictum in DK management. What fluids. is the problem? It is fluid. Is if the insulin pumps are generally ins- inserted to the subcutaneous plane. If there are no fluids in your body, whatever you pump, it will not be taken. Okay. So, when the fluid dehydrated state, whatever you give through subcutaneous, it will not act. Even if there is a pump, it is not going to act because patient is dehydrated. Okay. So you have to hydrate the patient first, then it may work. Okay.